anniversary celebration of Menden was the Youth Day behind the center school at the athletic field. And the exciting, humorous event was that of the girls' sack race. The girls all lined up in the sacks, burlap, as they raced towards the finish line. Many of them spilled, but one girl came across, and the judge came out, declaring her the winner of the sack race. The 300th anniversary celebration for the youth in the town of Menden, Massachusetts. Let's find out if we can get the name of the winner. Did we have a winner in the sack race? Paula well, Grand is first place. Paula Grands is first place. Paula Grands is first place in the sack race here at the athletic field behind the center school. Another event in the athletic events here at the school was the 75-yard dash for young boys. This is how the race picked up as it was in progress. In a few moments, the starter will give the downward motion of his hand, and the race is underway. They're cutting in between each other. The boys will be hugging the inside line. These are all youngsters running. Little boy in the brown shirt looks to be our apparent winner. It's going to be a tight second and third. There's the first, second, and third, a clearly defined point in the race as part of the athletic event. The 75-yard run was won by Mike Smith. And Ray Rondo finished second. Brian Bouchard finished third. Mike, congratulations. Was it a good race? Yes. It was? Well, Mr. Carlson has your trophy for you. Why don't you take that? And congratulations for the 75-yard run. And thank you. This is also part of the Athletic Day Field events. This is the four-and-a-half-mile marathon race from one of the stores in downtown Menden through a specially altered course to make it a distance of four and one-half miles. Now let's see if we can pick up in the camera range the winner of this four-and-a-half-mile marathon. This is Tom Kadarian from Milford, finishing number one in the four-and-a-half-mile. And far ahead of the pack of six, originally 14 entrants, in the four-and-a-half-mile marathon. Number two is now in sight. He's wearing the white racing trunks and the purple racing jersey. It's hard to pick out his number at this particular time. As a crowd, they say that it's Lamarb from Menden, Paul Lamarb from Menden, wearing number one, numeral number one. A good crowd has stayed out here in the 82 degree temperatures on this beautiful Saturday as Menden celebrates its 300th anniversary. A big finish as he almost came to a complete stop. He'll finish in a burst of speed. And number two, Paul Lamarb from Menden. Still in the background, we would expect to find four of the six runners as we'll look down the field and see if we can spot them from our vantage point. Dale wearing numeral number five and finishing third in the four and a half mile Menden Marathon. They all look a little bit winded. There's the traditional cup of water and the wedge of orange. It's an extremely warm day to be running on this Saturday afternoon, but it was a championship race. The four and a half mile marathon was run by a Milford fella, Tom Dedarian. Tom, here's your trophy for winning. I don't know exactly what your time was, but I'm sure under these adverse conditions it was a little bit slower than you normally want. Congratulations. Tom, congratulations on behalf of old Dairy. You win first prize. Congratulations. Thank you. Position number two went to Paul Lamar from Menden. The first Menden running across the line in a big toast of uh, runners. Paul? Paul is not here, so we'll just take his trophy and hand it down to uh, one of the other fellows, too. This was number three, was Harry Miller. Harry? Congratulations for a fine run on a pretty warm day. Was it too hot for you? A little hot. A little hot. Harry, on behalf of Mike's Power Equipment, we present you with the third place trophy and uh, behalf of the Menden Marathon, congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay, Harry. Another Milford runner finished in fourth position, and this was uh, Soren Alexarian from uh, Hopedale. Okay, he's from Hopedale. And they presented trophies to him as he finished in position uh, number four. And there was the trophy. Most of the runners had to uh, pull out because of the extreme heat. Temperatures were up in the mid-80s for the four-and-a-half-mile marathon.
300 years, there have been a great many crimes committed in the town of Mendon. And today, justice will have its out. Your Honor, may we have your name for the record? My name is Judge U. R. Guilty. Would you declare this court open for proceeding? First case, bailiff. Your Honor, the first case is that of Mr. Henry Clough. Mr. Clough has been charged with working too hard on this celebration. In fact, without Mr. Clough, there would be no celebration. Do you mean to say he started this 300 years ago? No, no, Your Honor, no. He, he only started it a year ago when he called the first meeting. But that was 2,648 meetings ago. This man is as guilty as sin, Your Honor, and we know how guilty that is, don't we? I object, I object. Are you trying to imply that the judge is familiar with sin? You leave my private life out of this. You have your celebration and I'll have mine. The defense rests, Your Honor. The prosecution rests, Your Honor. That's the trouble around here. Everybody's resting and only Mr. Clough is working. With all due respect, Mr. Clough, this court finds you guilty and orders you to take a five minute rest in the public start. <laughs> May we have the next case, Bailiff? Your Honor, this next case deals with the most grubby, despicable-looking character we've ever had before this court. I call Aldor Tetro. Are you sure that that's real hair there, young man? Don't touch that thing. Who knows what creepy, crawly creatures may be hiding in that ugly growth. <laughs> ugly? Why, this fine, upstanding young man probably has the best-looking beard in Menden. You ought to see it after it's been washed and combed. Fine idea. I'd like to see it washed and maybe even deloused. I agree. <laughs> I find this character guilty of creating a public menace. Keystone cops do your duty into the tub. Where's the shampoo? Where's the shampoo? A 300th anniversary celebration would not be a true celebration unless there was manpower. And this is how it's provided for the Fireman's Muster, the 300th anniversary of the town of Mendon. Over here in back of the high school, in the same area where the Youth Field Day was held, Hancock Brigade from Ashburnham in a hand pump built in 1828 will attempt to shoot a stream of water a greater distance than the other three competitors. The other three being Jerry's of Marblehead, Torrent Company of Southboro, and Niagara No. 2 of Upton. In 1828, this is when Hancock Brig Brigade from Ashburnham was built. And you'll see, as the men begin to pump furiously, a huge effort upon the part of the 15 or 16 men there are now pushing that water under pressure out through the hose. The stream of water is bucking a crosswind from left and right. If you see the flags, the red and yellow flags off to the left being held by two of the volunteers, the water is now being measured. And the measurement, 162 feet for Hancock Brigade from Ashburnham. Number two on the firing line, Gary's Five of Marblehead, with a unit built in 1845. Working quite heavy in this warm weather. You'll see now the stream of water as it pours out at the end of the hose, the measurement on the tar paper rug, which has been rolled out, and we'll have the measurement in just a moment. For Jerry's Five of Marblehead, the measurement 144 feet, 6 inches, built in 1845. They're now in position number two. 150 pounds of pressure at least. As another unit gets underway, this is Torrent Company of South Pro. You notice the wind is not pushing that flag as much, so they may get a better measurement. They're shooting for better than 162 feet. Better than 162 feet here in the Fireman's Muster in the 300th anniversary of Menden. 
The measurement for Torrent Company, 142 feet, 8 inches. This is Niagara, number two of Upton, as they pump away, looking for a third-place position in the fireman's muster here at the Menden 300th anniversary. The best for Niagara, number two of Upton, 140 feet, 4 inches. So there's the roundup right now. Hancock Brigade from Ashburnham is the winner. Jerry's Five of Marblehead, number two. Torrent Company of Southboro, number three. And Niagara, number two of Upton, for the Fireman's Muster. Saturday night, June 24th, 1967. The Lakeview Banquet. From Church and State, President and Committee Chairman, the head table served as the focal point of the 300th anniversary. It was an evening of food conversation prior to the grand climax, the events of Sunday, June 25th, 1967, a day that was 300 years in the making. Let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope in years to come. Be with these thy children as we remember the patriots and forebearers of times past. May the spirit of love and truth and sacrifice be with us today as we remember our forefathers. As dinner was being served for the 900 residents of Menden who turned out here at Lakeview, the spirit of the evening broke into song and sing they did to bring music to the celebration of the 300th anniversary of the town of Menden, Massachusetts. This was Menden, 1967.
Dudley, Reverend Clergy, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, at this time I have two very pleasant official duties to perform. First, I would like to extend to you all a very cordial welcome and word of greeting from the General Committee which has been responsible for arranging the Menden 300th anniversary celebration. The response to all our activities has been overwhelming. And in particular, that is true of this affair tonight. I would <coughs> hope that each one of you would have a very, very pleasant evening here and that the memories of this occasion together with those of the other events of the celebration will always be very, very pleasant ones for you to recall. My second duty is to introduce the gentleman who will serve as the master of ceremonies for the evening. He is a native of Menden. He was born here, educated in the public schools. <laughs> After graduation from college and law school, he was admitted to the bar in 1957 and has been a practicing attorney since that time. He has served as town council for the town of Menden and also for the town of Upton for a large number of years. He comes from a truly remarkable family, one of which we in Menden are very proud. Jacob Opiwal of Whitensville, Massachusetts. It is a distinct honor and pleasure for me to be asked to this rostrum to address you and to act this evening as the master of ceremonies of, of this important program. I am filled with nostalgia and remembrances of the first 18 years of my life that was spent within the confines of what is, what is now called Menden. Reverend clergy, members of the General Assembly, fellow selectmen, honored guests, friends and dear fellow Mendenites. It is indeed my great pleasure and privilege here on this commemorative occasion to extend to you all, on behalf of our town, a warm and heartfelt welcome. This occasion marks a most important milestone in the history of Menden. It's only fitting that we should pause for a few brief moments in time to review the past and borrow from it some confidence for which we can face the future. The interest and the concern which has been shown for Menden's welfare in the past many years is clearly manifested by this tremendous response visible here tonight. Men of plenty. Thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster. That was a splendid introduction. I'm very grateful for it. Reverend Clergy, and Chairman Klopp, and the other Vice Chair and Chairman of this wonderful committee that's done such splendid work. Outstanding members of the General Court, our distinguished friend Senator Kelly, and Representative McKenney, Representative Gould, and former Representative Gladys Crockett, and Mr. Elmer Nelson, and other town officials of this great town, and other distinguished guests, too numerous to mention, and friends and fellow Americans. This is a great night for Menden. And it is a great night for all the people of this community. 
And I am exceedingly happy and highly privileged and honored to join you tonight in the presence of this very able and distinguished group of dignitaries that have gathered here to celebrate the 300th anniversary of your lovely New England town of Menden, one of the oldest and one of the finest, certainly, in the nation. Righteous counsels and just works, give to thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts, being disposed to keep thy commandments and the fear of enemies taken away, the times by thy protection may be peaceful. As part of the 300th anniversary at Nipmuc Regional High School, an ecumenical faith service was held. The ecumenical faith choir and the featured speakers, Dr. Howard W. Ferrin, Chancellor Emeritus of Barrington College, and Bishop Bernard J. Flanagan of Wood. a distinct honor to be invited to share with you in this to centenary ecumenical service. I am sure that already you have received many congratulations from dear and far upon the 300th anniversary of the founding of your fair town. Let me add my warm and personal congratulations. It is no little distinction for any community in America to have reached its 300th birthday. Your history must be most interesting. In fact, I read that your first meeting house established in 1668. And so probably the first major institution in this community to 
be built was a church. The Blessed Paul the Apostle Corinthians, chapter 13. Brethren, if I should speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but not have love, I am a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. And if I were a prophet and knew all mysteries and had all knowledge, and if I should have faith so great that I could move mountains, but not have love, I am nothing. And if I were to give away everything I have to feed the poor, and if I were to hand over my body to be burned, but not have love, I would gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. It does not put on airs. It is not snobbish. Love does nothing rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not prone to anger. It does not brood over injuries. Love is not happy over iniquity, but rejoices along with the truth. Most Reverend Bernard J. Flanagan, Bishop of the Diocese of Worcester. My dear friends of Mendon and your guests, May I first of all echo Dr. Farron's words of congratulation on this unique occasion and my very best and warmest wishes for your future. I share too his pleasure in the privilege of being able to take part in this celebration with you. It's a privilege, surely, that will be unusual in the lifetime of all of us. I did a little research in the history of Worcester County, which is also coterminous with our diocese, and I was able to learn that Menden is the second oldest town in Worcester County, being preceded only by a few years by the town of Lancaster. In my remarks today, I would like to speak to you about the ecumenical movement and about your part in it, and it seems to me that this is a fitting subject since you come to do it together today in an ecumenical convocation. I presume that as you celebrate this anniversary, there will be different kinds of events, programs to commemorate the occasion. In fact, I think I read today you will have a parade, and I suppose there will be pageantry and so forth. And during this time, since an anniversary is properly a time when you recall the past, cherished memories, personalities, and events, I'm sure that you will recall some of the outstanding events in the history of your community and at the same time, the names of many of the people who had a part in those events. Let us pray. The Lord our God, through the grace of Jesus Christ, we pray to you. May your will be done in us and in all the world. Make us believe that you love us and your Son, that we live in your love, that we hope always in your love and have peace on this earth where there is so much unrest and disquiet. Let us ever stand firm and be faithful. Let us in, keep us in your peace and in the rest which you give us in our Lord Jesus Christ. Through thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, may our faith ever reach out in any situation that thy grace may abound towards us. May we see hope, O God. May we see a light. May we see a way forward under thee and in thy wisdom at all times. May thy love, O God, life love like unto thy love, move in our midst and cause us to love one another in spite of differences of belief, that we may be one in his spirit and thy spirit. Now, O God, May thy love and thy power, the grace of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship, the communion, the blessing of the Holy Spirit, 
be upon all of us, now and into eternity. And there was time for dancing. The minuet was a popular dance of years past. In the pageant presented at Nipmuc Regional High School, students from the first grade at the center school danced the minuet. Now, let's meet our young dancers, Miss Beth Lukert and Mr. Ernest Thomas, Miss Deborah Miller and Mr. Cameron Island, Miss Nancy Morin and Mr. Mark Wynn, Miss Susan Facia and Mr. Robert Callery. And our final minuet dancers, Miss Laura Barber and Mr. Reese Rhodes. This was a highlight of the historical pageant presented on the occasion of Menden's 300th anniversary at Nipmuc Regional High School, Thursday, June 22nd, and Friday, June 23rd, 1967. Important part of Menden's celebration. It depicted in acts the history. Students from Center School and Nipmuc Regional High School, along with others, played the parts of Menden's 300-year celebration. These were the students from Center School who portrayed the scene of the minuet. These are the students who played the parts in the schoolroom scene in the 1800s. The students from Nipmuc Regional High School played the roles of the square dancers. As did students from Nipmuc Regional High School as soldiers and the Amadon Tavern scene. Once again, the students from Nipmuc portraying the Indians and the settlers. And to provide color and history, these are the Brothers of the Brush. Our presentation begins with a scene depicting the signing of Menden's famous Indian deed in 1662, which granted an area eight miles square of virgin forest to the newcomers from Braintree and Weymouth. The faces you met earlier have returned. They approach in the distance. Let us welcome them. Bring the feast fight. Peace, my friends. Peace. Let us smoke the feast fight. We have brought the scroll and the payment of which we spoke. Goodman Brackett, would you bring forth the scroll? Shall we sign this Indian deed with our mark at this time in exchange for the agreed payment? And so it was with the signing of the Indian deed and a price of 24 pounds silver on that eighth day of September in 1666.
62. This is the 300th anniversary parade in Bendon, Massachusetts. The lead car with the Grand Marshal, Major Bruce Thomas of Bendon, and the State Police contingent, House Speaker John F. X. Davron, Selectman from Mendon, Hopedale, Milford, Upton, Northville, and many surrounding towns. Hey, gotta give me more time. Mendon Police hey, Department. Hey. Gary. The Selectman from the area towns, Upton, Massachusetts, and John F. X. Davron, one of the many antique automobiles, and more of the Selectman and representatives from the communities surrounding Mendon. Base Color Guard. This is the Nipmuc Regional High School Senior Band. behind the Nipmuc Regional High School Senior Band, one of the floats from the Alumni Association. All performing just prior to the reviewing stand in the 300th Anniversary Parade in Mendon, Massachusetts. Menden Alumni Association, founded in 1890 to the present date. 
This is growth through education from the Nipmuc schools. Full view of the float from the Menden Alumni Association. This is the Menden Brothers of the Brush. Now the complete contingency, preceded by the Keystone Cops. These are the complete Menden Brothers of the Brush. Two, or perhaps a go-kart. This is the Mendham Brush Association. And a cool glass of beer would go good about this time. These are the Daughters of the Pioneers and the Indian Convention. 1667 to 1967. The Daughters of the Pioneers in Mendham's 300th anniversary parade. An old-fashioned carriage takes two to push. The Nipmuc Tribe Band, Order of Redmen, in Southbridge, Massachusetts. the Redmond marching unit, and they'll perform in front of the reviewing stand where a host of dignitaries have gathered on this Sunday afternoon. These are the firemen from the town celebrating its 300th anniversary. And a contingency of fire apparatus representing Menden, Hopedale, Milford, Upton, Northbridge, Blackstone, and Bellingham. Continuing with the fire apparatus from the surrounding towns from Upton, Hopedale, Blackstone, and Bellingham. And the Forest Fire Service from Northbridge, 1727, 1967, celebrating their 240th anniversary. This is the color guard from the Marshall Leyland Post, American Legion of Upton. The Menden Upton Elementary School Band. These are the Upton Bloomer Girls float, raising their voices on high in the 300th anniversary parade. A color guard from the American Legion representing Worcester County. From southern Worcester County, the antique fire truck representing the Voicher. This is the Gemini 8 Square Dance Club float from Upton, Massachusetts. Beware of dog and no camping allowed. Comes completely equipped. A hand-drawn cart uphill in 85 degree weather on this Sunday afternoon. The Marathon Chapter 28. 
from Upton, Massachusetts, the veterans of foreign wars, color guard. A float from Rhode Island, and Miss Majorette, 1967, Debbie Puguanian. This is a live flaming torch, and it's hot. From Burlville, the Willerettes. Centennial last year, representing Simeon's Catering Service in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. The Junior Senior High School Band from Hopedale. This is Niagara 2 and its own color guard from Upton, Massachusetts. From the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a horse color guard. Preservation and encouragement of barbershop quartet singing in America from Brentham, Massachusetts. But to be the finest in the land is the new Red Bull in Parking. The Walter H. Tillotson Post of the American Legion from Hopedale Color Guard. And this is the Hopedale Junior Senior High School Band. Massachusetts, R.L. Wood Post, number 355 of the American Legion. Batman and the Bat Boat, and a teeny tiny bopper known as Robin, from the Nipmuc Marine. Engineering Battalion from Whitensville, Massachusetts, and one of their road levelers. Directly behind that, another piece of heavy engineering equipment from the 181.
still continuing with the 181 and another piece of their equipment, the crane. This is the Union Church of Hopedale float. From Hopedale, the Union Church float. Richard Bethel landscaping float and a young teeny bopper. This is the radio station for Milford, WMRC. And their antique automobile for their modern radio station. And some antique automobiles, the Antiquer Knickers of Milford. This is the Milford High School Band. <laughs> This is the one in affiliation with the Miss Universe pageants. The Cup Counts. This is pack one from Menden, Massachusetts. And steps to Cubbing. of the brush and fun vehicle. More of the floats continuing. The color guard and the unit. The night nice the truck and vehicle tour of Millis, Massachusetts. twirlers and the Menden Grange float directly behind them. This is the Menden Grange float. 1887 1967. The history of Menden quite famous for its farm. These are the Worcester Men of Song, saluting Menden on its 300th anniversary. automobiles from the Restorers Club of Massachusetts. 30 of them, various vintages of years from the Ford Motor Company. For the antique cars contingent from the Restorers Club of Massachusetts. There were 30 units all together 
in the Antique Automobile Club. This is the color guard from the Oliver Ashton Post in Northbridge, Massachusetts. This is the Unitarian Church of Menden, the first parish, 1667 to 1967, the first meeting house. Happy birthday, Menden, from the Sutton Country Squares and the Square Dancers. In conjunction with Tom McCann's shoes, can you count the BBs on there for Bruce Bradley from WBZ? This is the color guard and marching unit from the Gaudette Post of Spencer. And these are the famed Framingham Blazers Band. for Menden on its 300th anniversary provided by the Framingham Blazers Band. This is from Upton. Upton number one and the Civil Defense Unit. You might get a sliver or two before the parade's over on a wooden bike. The Commonwealth Fife and Drum Corps from Uxbridge, Massachusetts. Commonwealth Fife and Drum Corps, and the Odd Fellow and Rebecca's of Oxbridge. The Sons of the Pioneers and their fitting gift to Menden, your birthday cake for 300 years. The 1127 Radio Club and the great communications work that they did for Menden during their celebration. The Uxbridge Group, Polish American Veterans Incorporated, and the Captain James Buxton Fight Drum Corps from Uxbridge. Sponsored by the Uxbridge Progressive Club, the Uxbridge Minutemen, as they passed through Menden on the march to Boston, April 19th, 1775. Framingham and Milford Musicians Band. marching unit from the Arnold Spencer Post, the American Legion, Bellingham, Massachusetts.
a younger celebration by at least 50 years, the Hubbardston Bicentennial Queen and her court. A wishing well, donations for retarded children, and before the end of this three-hour parade, there'll be a couple of hundred dollars worth of change. Wish upon a nickel, wish upon a dime. This be the Clan McPherson Band from Lawrence, Massachusetts. That is a real live chimp from the Southwick Wild Animal Farm. Happy birthday, Menden. This is Popsy from the Southwick Wild Animal Farm, two years old and 300 pounds. We hope she'll never forget this parade. The color guard from the Rockettes Drum and Bugle Corps, Auburn, Massachusetts. Boy Scout troop. And Cub Scout pack number one of St. Paul's Parish in Blackstone. These are rolls, three of them, owned by Lloyd McCrum of Hopedale. A couple of antique fire trucks from Shelley Vincent. This is the Menden Upton Junior High School Band. Robert Taft and Sons, Thomas, Robert Jr., Joseph, Daniel, and Benjamin on their way to build the first bridge across the Blackstone River. And more of the ox carts and the mounted contingent just towards the end of this fantastic 300th anniversary parade. The Daughters of the Pioneers, horses driven by Barbara Davenport and Charlene Barrows, horses in Surrey by the Daughters of the Pioneers. This is the Hillside Farm unit, and more from the horses, the mounted delegation in this 300th anniversary parade. Ox-drawn wagons from Clarence Bagley of Menden, and horses and buggies of the Daughters of the Pioneers. And there is the reviewing stand with all the dignitaries, the Grand Marshal, and the people who were responsible for making Menden's 300th anniversary a great one. The sky's filled with clouds, and it was just about time to run for cover. But it was a day that will long be remembered by Menden and the people from the original areas. From Blackstone, Millville, Northbridge, Uxbridge, Upton, Bellingham, Hopedale, and Milford. This is Menden's 300th anniversary. This was the climatic end to Menden's 300th anniversary parade. Mr. Clough, as general chairman, I know you might have just a couple of words of thanks to all of your committees who have done such a fine job. I certainly have. We have had tremendous cooperation from everybody and from all the officials of the surrounding towns. We very much appreciate all that has been done to make our anniversary the success that it has been. Thank you. It certainly was 300 years in the making. You've done an outstanding job here, and I'm sure all of the people from Menden and the surrounding communities will voice their expression when they can see the film and relive some of these magic moments. Thank you. Gentlemen, if you'd just like some uh, comment, we have one of the selectmen here, Mr. Taylor. How are you, sir? Very good. Did you enjoy yourself? Yes, sir, I did. You were one of the more colorful selectmen in the... Uh, 
in the entire festivities. A little bit, yes. Uh, my whole family is dressed the same way for the uh, uh, celebration. And uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Clough and everybody else that's taken part, all the town officials, everybody that's cooperated, police and everything. They have done a very tremendous job here. And I think the parade committee did a tremendous job in, in keeping it moving at such a fast pace. I want to thank him very, very much. And is that our honorary Grand Marshal over there, Major Thomas? Yes, it is. That's Major Bruce Thomas. Major Thomas, would you step into the camera just for a minute? Sure Did you enjoy it today? Oh, most certainly. Most certainly. Did all of the military units look sharp enough for you, sir? Yes, uh, I was quite satisfied with everything. I think Cub Scouts won the honors, though. <laughs> well, I'm sure that when they make the awards for the parades and the floats, that uh, there'll be a fair representation from both the military and the civilian. Well, it should be. This is uh, not anybody's particular parade today. This belongs to the whole town and everybody involved, so everybody should have a share. It certainly did bring the spirit of the community yes, up to a full yes, point in the did. last week or two. Fantastic, the way the, the town is just grab moving forward again. I'm real pleased to see it. Well, I'm sure they will. It's, it's a big step forward, and it's one that will be made with a renewed energy after this weekend. Yes, I'm sure. Thank you, Major Thomas. Right, thank you. More of the...